Hey everybody, it's Cheyenne and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about root canals. Woo! <laughs> everybody loves a good root canal, right? Um, I've gotten lots of requests or comments asking me if I can film a video of how to set up a root canal, like what it looks like when it's all set up. And I wish I could do that, but I can't film in, in my office and I also don't have a lot of root canal instruments at my home. So I'm just going to make a video um, discussing the process of a root canal and show pictures of what certain items look like because in my experience if you understand the process of a root canal and what the steps are then you basically can do a root canal with anybody because it is a lot of information it's a lot to set up but if you understand what the dentist actually has to do then it's easy to look for those certain items and set up for a root canal so if you guys don't know what a root canal is, it's when the dentist removes the nerve of a tooth. Usually it's because the cavity's gotten too large, so it's gone to the pulp, which is the nerve, or the patient's having pain, it's infected, a dead tooth, things like that. So the very first step, of course, is the doctor needs to get the patient numb because during a root canal, the patient is wearing a rubber dam and the patient has to be numb before the rubber dam is placed because it hits your gum tissue it's just going to be really uncomfortable if they're not numb so the doctor needs to get the patient numb now the patient wears a rubber dam because it isolates the tooth and the doctor is using tiny little files and air like stuff to irrigate the tooth with so you don't want that stuff falling into the patient's mouth so it's just best to have the patient wear a rubber dam so some dentists will put on their own rubber dam some dentists will have their assistants do it. At my office, the assistants do it. So the dentist will get the patient numb, he'll leave the room, and then I'll usually give the patient a minute or two before I put on the rubber dam to make sure that the gum tissue is numb. And then I will place on the rubber dam. I do have a video talking about how to do that, so I will put it above here. So the patient has the rubber dam on, then I go and let the dentist know that the patient is ready. So he's going to come into the room and the first thing he's going to do is he's going to use his hand, his hand piece, the high speed hand piece, and he's going to access the canal. So he's going to drill through the occlusal surface of the tooth, which is the biting surface of the tooth, and he's going to access the canal. So he's just going to go bloop and put his burr in there. And then I'm going to hand him um, K files, which are also called hand files. I'm gonna hand him those and then he's just going to use those to clean out the pulp or the nerve of the tooth, okay? So there's all different sizes to these. And you'll see there's basically a width size and then a length size. And as you progress through root canals, you'll kind of understand maybe which files you should have handy. Like if you're gonna be working on a canine tooth, you're going to want a longer length file. And the most common ones are 21s, 25s, and 30s. So 30 is gonna be longer, of course, than 21. And a canine is a very long tooth, so you're gonna want the 30s out. But your dentist will let you know. And if you're newer, don't be afraid to ask him, like, hey, what size files do you think you're gonna need? Um, and then of course, if you're working on a tooth that doesn't have a long root, like a molar or premolar, then you can use 21, 25s, um, like interior teeth sometimes have shorter roots. Also look on the x-ray. You can see how long the root is on the x-ray. Another thing, make sure you have a PA of the tooth, an x-ray of the whole tooth, including the root before you start a root canal. Very, very important. But anyways, so you're going to be handing him K files and he's going to be putting them in the tooth to clean out the nerve or the pulp of the tooth. And then he's gonna use a machine called an apex locator. So he's gonna put that on the patient and like hooks onto their cheek and then the other part hooks onto the K file. And while he's cleaning out the tooth, he'll kind of put it in when he thinks that he's cleaned out or he's reached the apex, which is the end of the root. And the apex like locator has like a green to red dial or a red to green dial. And it will go to green when he's reached the end of the tooth. So then he knows that he's reached the apex and he's cleaned out, you know, most of the nerve. So he will then, <laughs> which every doctor is different. Some doctors will leave the file in, but the doctor I work, work with takes out the file and then he'll ask me for some gutta percha. 
which is what we actually fill the tooth with at the end of the root canal. And he'll put that in the canal and then he'll ask me to take an x-ray. And then when you take the x-ray, it will show if he's reached the apex of the tooth. So if the canal is fully filled up and he's gotten to the very end of the tooth because for a successful root canal, you wanna make sure you get to the end of the tooth. Now you don't wanna go through the tooth because it means you've blown out the apex. So you wanna get right to the end of the root. So if this is successful, if the x-ray shows that he's reached the end of it, we'll move on to the next step. If not, he'll keep using the apex locator and keep using the K-files until he has reached the end of the tooth. So let's say the x-ray was successful. It looks good, he's gotten to the end of the tooth. So then of course he'll take out the gutta percha. Now he will use an endo file, which basically is kind of similar to the K file, but it's not a hand file because it attaches to the hand piece. And then he will use that to clean out the rest of the nerve of the tooth. And he'll ask you for the size of what he thinks that canal is. So it might be a 25, it might be a 30, whatever it may be. He'll ask you for the correct size. Um, sometimes you just have all the sizes on your little dental, your endo sponge, which I'll show a picture of that here, um, with all different sizes files on it so we can just grab what he needs. But he'll use that to clean out the file, or not clean out the tooth. And then he'll use um, something to irrigate the tooth, okay? Now, very important why he's irrigating, you wanna make sure that you're using an endosuction. And basically it looks just like a normal HVE or a normal suction, but it's very tiny on the end because you want it to be right up against the tooth because you don't want this, the stuff that we're using to irrigate the tooth to accidentally go into the patient's mouth or spill anywhere. So you wanna make sure you're right up against the tooth. So basically what most dentists irrigate with is a bleach and water solution and it's water with a little bit of bleach in it. And you fill it up in your syringe and then you hand it to your dentist. And the syringe has an endo tip on the end of it. So it goes up into the canal and he irrigates the inside of the tooth. And what this does is it sterilizes it, it kills any pulp that might be in there and basically just sterilizes it for the filling material. So he does that, you have your suction up there, you're sucking out so it doesn't fall into the patient's mouth so the patient doesn't get bleach in their mouth or bleach water. <laughs> so once he's doing that or he's done with that, he'll then ask you for the gutta percha. Now the dentist will tell you the size of the canal and he'll tell you what size gutta percha that he needs. So he'll say, you know, give me a 30 gutta percha. So you hand him the gutta percha, he's gonna put it into the canal, and then he's gonna use either a gutta percha gun or like this little machine. Um, or if he's old school, some dentists will use a torch and um, an endo plugger. And what they do is they grab the torch and they'll warm up the endo plugger. And they basically put it in the tooth and melt off the excess gutta percha and smash up the gutta percha into the pulp chamber of the tooth. Or the gun works the same way. It's a, it's a heated gun, it's hot, and you preload gutta percha in there. And he uses it the same exact way. He'll put it into the tooth and he'll melt off the excess and then squirt some gutta percha in there. Both are very effective. It just depends if your dentist is a little more old school or if he's newer and has the cool fancy equipment. Um, so he'll do that and then that's it. And then you'll put a temporary filling on it. Most dentists want a temporary filling because they want to make sure the tooth reacts well to the root canal. So they'll wait a few weeks before putting the permanent filling on there or doing the crown prep. So we usually do a temporary filling. Um, sometimes a dentist will have the assistant place IRM, which is like a putty like filling that the assistants can place or my doctor uses Fuji, which is a temporary filling material as well. And he just puts it up there, smooths it off, make sure they're not biting on it. Bada bing, bada boom. And then you always wanna make sure you get an X-ray at the end of the root canal. So you're taking one in the beginning to make sure you have a full picture of the tooth. You're taking one in the middle of the root canal to make sure that he's reached the apex. And then you're taking one at the end of the root canal to make sure that the root canal looks well and then also you have proof of the insurance that you completed the root canal. Huh, it's a lot of stuff, huh? <laughs> uh.
actually forgot to mention something now that I did that whole spiel. When he puts the gutta percha in, you use a, um, it's called Sealer Plex. That's a certain brand, but there are other brands. If you put the gutta percha, you basically smear on the gutta percha because it helps seal the canal. Um, and then also when he's using the burrs and the handpiece inside the tooth, there is something called RC prep. It's basically like a little, um, it's kind of like grease almost, but it keeps the canal lubricated so it's not so rough when he's drilling in there. Um, I did forget to forget to mention those two things. So I'll show you pictures of that. So the RC prep is for the endo, um, the endo files that go on the handpiece and the sealer plex or whatever brand that you use is for the gutta percha when he puts it in the canal. So yeah, root canals have a lot going on. Um, what I've come to learn though, as long as you understand the process of what's happening, they're very easy to do with every dentist because even if every dentist uses different things to do a root canal, it's always the same process. So as long as you understand that and just get things out to complete the process, then you should have an easy time setting up for a root canal. Does that make sense? Is this a lot for one video? It might be a lot for one video. <laughs> But I hope the pictures were helpful. I hope this video was helpful. Um, honestly, assisting during a root canal is fairly easy. It's just all the stuff that you have to get out for that procedure. It's a lot of cleanup and a lot of stuff and a lot of stuff that you have to remember. Um, but the actual procedure is actually very easy. And a lot of times I just find myself just standing there while the dentist is doing his thing. So yeah or her thing, whatever. <laughs> so anyways, I hope you guys found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.